I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On Good Friday, the darkness wins. On Good Friday, the darkness wins. Or so it seems. What is so good about Good Friday? Our altar is stripped bare. Our candles are unlit and hidden in a closet. There are no flowers, no hallelujahs, and even our cross is veiled from our sight. So I ask again, what is so good about Good Friday? Our hope can be stripped as bare as the altar leaving us like the disciples to deal with the anxiety and the loss epitomized in a tomb. Diedrich Bonhoeffer, the World War II theologian and teacher, writes, Good Friday and Easter free us to think about things far beyond our personal fate about the ultimate meaning of all life, suffering, and events. And we, hold, we lay hold of a great hope. When we read the story of Jesus, the triumphant entry, the Last Supper, the trial, the scourging, the walk to Calvary, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension. The story matters. Father Charleston in his sermon yesterday reminded us that John's words matter. Each of John's words matter. He compared it, compared John to the painter Picasso and his brush strokes. For John, his words paint a picture for us. The story of Jesus and His crucifixion gives us a history lesson straight out of the Exodus story. The preparation of the lamb, none of the bones were broken. The hyssop that held the sponge filled with a sour wine reminds us of the bundle of hyssop that painted the doorposts and the header on the night of the Passover. The hour of Jesus' death was the same hour that the Passover lamb was to be slain. When Jesus was asked by Pilate if if he was a king, he responded, you say I am. This reminds us of Moses standing in front of a burning bush, asking for a name that he could tell the Israelites when they asked, Who sent him? God, speaking from within the burning bush, tells Moses, Tell the Israelites, I am sent me to you. On Monday, Thursday, we tell the story of the Last Supper and Jesus is washing the disciples' feet. On Good Friday, we retell the story of Jesus' capture, trial, sentencing, and crucifixion. And at the great vigil of Easter, we tell the creation story. The story of the Israelites being saved through the waters of the Red Sea. And the power of God shown through Ezekiel's dream of reanimating a valley of dry bones. The Bible is replete with story after story of God's saving help. His great love for His people. His saving help in sending His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from the bondage of sin and death.
In the NCAA men's basketball tournament, there seems to always be a Cinderella team who originates from some small college that few have heard of outside of their region where they play. This year in the first round, one such team drew a titan, the University of Kentucky. The team seemed to have little hope on paper. Kentucky had a far better stats in rebounding, points scored per game, assists, blocked shots, the list went on and on in about every line of their statistics. Kentucky was the far superior team. In the locker room before the game, the coach was reported to have told his players the story of their university and how the men's basketball program had not returned to the NCAA tournaments since 1997 when they had reached the final four. The coach used the history of the men's basketball program to encourage and motivate his players to face the Titan with resolve and assured them that they had every tool to win the game. A number 14 seed against a number 4 seed. <clears throat> Oakland University, the Golden Grizzlies, led by their coach, Greg Kempe. By the way, the longest tenured coach in NCAA men's basketball. Made it to the second round for the first time since 1997, beating my Kentucky Wildcats by four points. Their history mattered. Our history matters. As Christians, our history is retold every year, every Sunday, every time the Scripture is read, studied, taught, or preached. The story we tell during the Tritium is one of great pain and suffering, humiliation and shame, death and resurrection, and victory. Let's never forget the victory. Like this small basketball team from Auburn, Michigan, we too can draw inspiration to persevere and overcome our titans that we are facing. Today the darkness wins, but tomorrow the light will shine with the brightness of the sun. That's capital S-O-N, sun. Regardless if you have troubles within your life, we all have troubles in our lives. Regardless if you feel unworthy, we all feel unworthy. Regardless if you are a sinner, well, we're all sinners. What matters is that you believe. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died and rose again. So like Jesus, we can be buried in the waters of baptism and raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that all who believe in Him might not perish, but have everlasting life. That's our history. What's so good about Good Friday? The late Catholic Bishop Fulton J. Sheen once said, unless there's a Good Friday in your life, there can be no Easter Sunday. What's so good about Good Friday? Well, my friends, today we rest because tomorrow brings a new day. And like Annie sang in that play, named the same Annie, the sun will come out tomorrow. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 